So Michael Pactor, one of the things he's criticized for are this are his predictions, right? And one of the predictions was that the console market would be ending. So I actually sort of asked him to talk about that a little bit more and and sort of uh, talk about what he was trying to say in that report. Because, you know, I see a lot of you online, you're like, oh, he predicted the console market was going to end. Well, was he totally wrong? Because the console market, he thinks, will shrink. Here's everything that he had to say about it. And this is where we got that really spicy quote about Sony basically being uh, screwed. <laughs> Uh, I don't agree with that, for the record, by the way. I think they're going to be just fine, but they are utilizing an old model that should probably be updated, and I think they'll they'll get there. Anyway, here's the interview. This deal is going to hurt Sony badly. That doesn't hurt consumers at all. So, yes, this what, what Microsoft is proving out is $15 a month for content is a better deal than $500 up front, $70 for the content, and $5 a month for multiplayer. And so Sony can either adapt or get run over. So what's going to happen with that Game Pass is I think that the console guys like Sony will continue to be ridiculously stupid and will continue to hand advantages to Microsoft and allow them to grow. I admire Microsoft because they see this happening and they're exploiting it. And remember, at the end of the day, Microsoft doesn't care about profit per game per consumer. They care about taking Game Pass from 25 million subscribers to 225 million. If they add 200 million subscribers, they're making an extra, what is, I can't even do the math anymore, um, 300 million a month. Like, you know, is that right? No, three, three and a half billion a month, three billion a month. Yeah, 200 million incremental times 15 bucks. They're going to make three billion a month. Guess what? That funds a lot of content. Mm -hmm. They're going to be fine. So <laughs> Sony's going to, Sony is absolutely going to get their ass kicked and it's not bad for consumers. So 99% of game revenue came from selling a product, whether it was packaged or digital download. And that was how we played games. Fast forward 20 years, and now in 2023, probably 70% of all game revenue comes from mobile, and probably you know the remainder, 15%-ish, is, is some type of free-to-play game experience like League of Legends you know, or World of Tanks or Apex Legends on PC or console. And then the rest is that pay as you go, you know, pay 50 bucks, 60 bucks for a game. Um, so the companies that haven't adapted, and Ubisoft is a good example, have watched the whole world fly by them like, like they were standing still. Um, the console market in 2011, the console PC, was like 22, 23 billion to sell games. Today it's like 15. So the industry has shrunk. The only reason Ubisoft hasn't shrunk materially is because between 2011 and now, Midway and THQ and IDOS you know, went away. Mm -hmm. um, had those guys still been in business? And wow, it would have been tough to... How do you survive in a market that's shrinking like that? So think of console games the way you think of movie theaters. There will always be a desire to play a game that way, you know, the highest quality experience. Seeing Avatar in IMAX you know, for 15 bucks is worth it as opposed to waiting for it to be on your phone. You know, you're just not going to, I mean, you can do that, but you won't do that. So yeah, there will always be a need for console games, but it's going to go from 15 billion to 10. And you're going to, it's just like movie business. You're not going to have $50 million uh, box office films with starring Rob Lowe in a romantic comedy. They aren't going to be made anymore. It's all big blockbuster stuff. So we'll still have Call of Duty and FIFA and Battlefield. Um, and Assassin's Creed, but I doubt you're going to see games like The Crew get made and sold for any you know any material amount. Let's say your Grand Theft Auto Online, right? You you do 400 million a year in revenue from GTA Online. The only people who can play it are one of the 145 million people who bought GTA Six or Five uh, on console or PC. What if you just put that on Game Pass? It's free. How many players will you get? How about 25 million overnight, like you will? World of Warcraft, well, Microsoft owns that. You're a World of Warcraft player paying 15 bucks a month. What if they tell you, oh, by the way, you still have your WoW subscription and you get everything else? That's great. 
Like, I think that's, you know, so the models are going to adapt. I think you're going to get a lot of free-to-play content showing up on the subscription services. I think Sony could get that, right? Will Sony put new releases day and date on their on their um, service? No, because they are clinging to the myth the console business is healthy and will remain healthy. It's not going to be. It's going to shrink. So, again, they don't need it day and date. They can do it three months later, just like movies are in the theater. So you can watch. You know, we're, we're all trained with movies. If you wait three, four months, it's going to show up on some system anyway. Sony should be doing that now. They should say, okay, you know, we, we had God of War. I mean, freaking uh, Warner Brothers Interactive should figure out a way to put um, Harry Potter the game, you know, Hogwarts, on on some streaming service. Microsoft right now, I bet, would pay up big time for that. I mean, they've already sold 12 million copies. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And, like, well, anyway, I don't know if that would ever happen. But actually... Oh, it won't. But it won't because <laughs> cl- they all cling to the past and they're not thinking about the future. Yeah. Real quick, thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this far, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell. Now, back to the interview. My argument back in 2006 was, as we are given an opportunity to consume video game entertainment elsewhere, we will spend less hours on console gaming. We spend less hours, we will um, necessarily buy fewer games. Now, in 2006, I didn't see Call of Duty becoming the phenomenon that it's become. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't. You know, I think there were probably 2 million or 3 million people who played multiplayer back in 2006. <laughs> I certainly didn't see FIFA Ultimate Team becoming the phenomenon that's become 25 million people. Yeah. But so clearly the console guys have done things and GTA Online to perpetuate engagement, you know, to keep it going and going and going. So it's been slower than I thought, but I'm absolutely right. It is still happening. And again, I use the movie model as my my analogy, and that's the right analogy. Um, game streaming is what twelve years behind movie streaming. Mm-hmm. So Netflix, believe it or not, they started video streaming in two thousand seven. Got big in eleven. We're in twenty twenty three, and game streaming still not that big. Give it another ten years. I mean, here you and I are talking, you know, sitting 50 miles apart with pretty high speed internet. It's it's a, only a matter of time before everybody has that. Obviously, lag is an issue. And if you want to play multiplayer competitively in a shooter game, then even 20 or 30 milliseconds is too slow, you know, of, of lag. You, you'll It won't be fair. So we'll still play console games. There will be that component of the population. Mm-hmm. That isn't everybody who plays Call of Duty Online. You know, slow twitch guys like me. Like, if I play any multiplayer game, it's Overwatch and I'm Reinhardt. You know, I'm a tank. I move, <laughs> And I could care less about lag when I'm trying to figure out how to move from here to there and just block out, you know, my Hanso or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. like I don't care. So, you know, that's most players. I think most players aren't good enough, competitive enough to care. Most meaning more than half. I don't mean 90%. But but sure, I think there still will be purists who play on console only. Um, I know people who play Fortnite on their phone. You know, yeah. That's clearly not the best experience. But you can participate. You can do stuff. You know, and they do. So I get it. So everything everything I do is based on my my keen grasp of history mm-hmm. and extrapolating history and assuming it's going to repeat itself. Um, so if you kind of roll back to the 1940s, the only way you could consume filmed entertainment was in a movie theater. And I don't, I couldn't even tell you even how many people there were in the U S but, but let's say, you know, there are a hundred million people in the U S and it's probably 150, but it's, it's something like that. And, and, 90% of them went to the movie theater and consumed films. Oh, well, here we are, you know, 80 years, 90 years later, 85 years later. And we have seven different ways to consume filmed entertainment. We have obviously the theater, then we have television. Um, and then you've got various ways to pay per view, video on demand, rent a DVD, right? Streaming services. Um, premium cable. There's just all these different ways to pay, right? Mm. How many people consume filmed entertainment now in the U.S.? And the answer is 330 million, all of them. And 
how many hours did we consume movies in the 1940s per person? 20 a year, you know, when it's to 10 movies. Mm-hmm. How many hours do we consume filmed entertainment now? In a day? I don't know, seven? A lot. Yeah, it's a right? lot. And, I'm, and you know, I'm including YouTube videos. I'm including mm-hmm. TikTok, right? But we literally, like my phone, I, I read the paper on my phone, but seven hours a day I'm on my yep. phone. You know, so it, it's it, it, the number of people who consume entertainment has exploded and the number of hours has exploded. And that's because of accessibility, because we've made content available in so many different forms. So games are just getting there. The reason mobile is a $100 billion market and console is a $15 billion market is that anybody with a phone can play a mobile game. And, and to, to flip that upside down, anybody with a console can play a console game, but you got to have 500 bucks to have a console. Yeah. So, you know, the phone, you could say, well, you got to have 500 bucks to get a phone, but not really. You got to have 30 bucks a month at a T Mobile, you know, at T Mobile, and they'll give you a Galaxy S2 or whatever. I mean, you can get a free phone for 30 bucks <laughs> a month. Yeah. Um, so, no, it does, it's not expensive. And we don't buy our phones to play games. That's the number one activity. That's not why we buy a phone. We buy a phone to communicate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, ultimately, there's three and a half billion phones out there. That's just three and a half billion more people who consume games than we used to have. We, you know, 20 years ago, pre cell phone, 30 years ago, maybe 100 million people played games on console and PC. Mm-hmm. Now it's three and a half billion. So, accessibility is absolutely the driver. And more consumption means more people who care about the content, who are willing to pay something willing to watch ads or whatever, willing to subscribe, willing to buy stuff in app. That's more for more developers. It's just that the shift has become mobile. I'd love to see the super premium content continue, uh, but fewer and fewer people are going to be willing to spend 70 bucks on Call of Duty, Mm -hmm. especially when it's free on Game Pass. You actually brought up with that conversation about Call of Duty being on Game Pass, you said in an interview closer to when the the merger was announced that Sony is effed. You sort of allude alluded to that today. So are they just going to like stop existing or PlayStation specifically? Sorry. No, Sony's gonna be. They're gonna stick to what they know. Um, there's a concept in management called the Peter Principle, where you get promoted for doing really good work and you keep and you do good work at your next level you get promoted again you get promoted again and the time when you stop getting promoted is when you can no longer do good work so you 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 reach your your peak and then you don't get promoted anymore because you can't exceed excel sony is kind of that way they they they've had a successful formula since 1994 with the playstation one and they've stuck to it, and it's worked brilliantly for them. And Nintendo, same. Um, it's worked brilliantly, brilliantly for them, and I don't think that they are very good at uh, self-reflection. I don't think they look at the world around them and say, what are we not doing? So as an example, their counter to Microsoft buying Activision was to buy Bungie. Why? Because Destiny is so freaking popular? I mean, what the hell? What, what was that, right? And it's not, again, Bungie's great, but they don't make mobile games. Where's Sony and mobile? Oh, no, they're a console publisher. They can't do mobile. Where Activision bought King. Look at that. You know, EA bought Glue. Take Two bought Zynga. Like, what's wrong with you, Sony? Maybe you should be doing some of this free-to-play stuff. Um, so I think what's going to happen is Sony's market's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, they'll continue to thrive because they're actually good at what they do. PlayStation 6 and 7 and 8 will be great. I think Sony's kind of in a diminishing uh, business environment. It's, by definition, it's just going to keep dif- diminishing. Microsoft's going to probably get out of the console business. I mean, they'll, they'll probably make one more after this just because they can, but they'll get out of it. And their their next generation console is probably going to be this multimedia thing that you know that you can do all sorts of different streaming and shit, and it'll be a router and it'll stream to every di- you know different rooms and all sorts of shit. Um, but Nintendo is going to stay the course. And the difference between Sony and Nintendo is Nintendo has more owned IP, and Nintendo is a little different. It's positioned more as a handheld company than a console company. But they can probably keep going for another 10, 15 years. 
Sony's going to have trouble in the next 10 years, I, I think. Not go away, but get smaller. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're one of the 50% of people who are not subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell right now. Don't forget, members get early access to all the interviews in their entirety, basically as soon as they're recorded. So if you want to become a member, click that join button. You also get access to all videos with no ads. Thank you so much to the members who have supported this far. If you like that interview, you can go check out the Foss Patents interview right here. And the full interview with Michael Pactor is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.